says by grace are you saved when you get to verse 9 it says verse 8 says by grace are you saved through faith it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast beloved he therefore has showered us yeah. with a plethora of yeah. grace yeah. and mercy. Yeah. When you read yeah. in Psalms 33, 18, yeah. it will tell you that uh, the Lord's eyes yeah. are upon those who fear him and have hope in his mercy. When you read Psalm 94, 18, it says, my foot almost slipped, but grace and God's mercy held me up. When you read Psalm 103, verse 17, it says, God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. When you read in James 5 11, it says the Lord is pitiful and he is full of tender mercy. When you read Jude 1 21, it says keep yourself in the love of God and look for his mercy when you read in Psalm 23 verse 6 it says goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life oh praise his name that is whatever because the Lord showed you mercy. I need to hear about 99 of you. I'll make 100. We won't mind shouting out. I made it by mercy. Oh, pray in his name. Whatever life has done to you, however life has carried you, God has shouted of mercy. Oh, praise his name. Thank God for his mercy. What do you call going to fight on foreign soil and not coming home in a box? You call that mercy. What do you call maintaining your sanity in a world that's gone crazy? You call it mercy. What do you call still being alive when other people around you are dying? You call it mercy. What do you call the Hudson River becoming a land and strip? You call it mercy. What do you call people who are too mean to live and want them fit to die? But the Lord reached down and saved him anyway. You call in mercy. If you're not too mean, shake somebody's hand and tell them the Lord showered me with mercy. Oh, pray in his name. I'll bid you a good day when I tell you. A few months ago, yeah, we had a National Baptist Convention Board meeting in Birmingham, Alabama. And at the end of the meeting, I had to catch a flight from Birmingham through to Detroit. But I had an exchange flight in Atlanta, Georgia. When I got to the airport, the flight was in an oversold situation. And the, the gate agent, Yes, began to make requests 
from people who were willing to give up their seat. And I walked up to the counter and I asked the gate agent, now what are the chances of me catching the next flight? And I need to get back to the city of Detroit to carry out my worship services for Sunday morning. And this was an agent that wore what Delta Airlines call a red coat. Now a person who is of a red coat status can make decisions beyond the standard gate agent. I said now, is it possible for me to get on another flight? She said, I can get you on another flight, but you gotta trust me first of all. She said, if you give up your seat, you just gotta trust me. So I gave up my seat. The flight that I was on made its way out of the gate. It taxied down the runway. It became airborne. Nobody sitting in the gate but me, myself, and I. She walked all the way from the gate. About an hour later, I saw her working at another gate, boarding another airplane. She never looked my way. The people boarded the airplane. The airplane pulled out of the gate area. The airplane taxied down the runway and became airborne. Nobody is sitting in the gate but me, myself, and I. About 30 minutes later, I saw her down at the end of the concourse. She came out in the hallway. I saw her waving her hand and beckoning for me. When I got to where she was, she handed me a first class ticket. She said, it's good you trusted me because I'm putting you on a flight that's leaving an hour, two hours later, but it's gonna get you back home an hour sooner. Shake somebody's hand and tell him you gotta trust him to work it out for you. The Lord can work it out for you. Shake somebody's hand and tell your neighbor, God can turn it around. Whatever you're crazy, if you put your trust in the Lord, won't it turn it around? When Moses and Israel came to the Red Sea, they were pressed to the Red Sea by the marching chariots of Pharaoh's army. Somebody said, it's all but God made a sea become a sidewalk and the people of God cross over on dry ground when Joshua and Israel came to the city of Jericho it was surrounded by a wall nobody came out and nobody got in they didn't have dynamite they didn't have a bulldozer they couldn't tear the wall down but God told him to march around the wall and shout on the seventh day and the walls fell down flat oh praise his name you remember little David who went in the battle of Elam against a nine feet giant all he had was a stone and a slingshot nobody gave him the chance to defeat a giant Goliath but God took a slingshot and a rock and killed a nine feet giant oh praise his name in the valley of dry bones there were all kind of bones in the valley dry parts and separated and nobody gave them a chance but God told the prophet Ezekiel to prophesy to the bone and talk to the wind and the bone got up stood up like a mighty army. You remember Paul and Silas who were put in a Philippian jail. They had nothing going for them but a wing and a prayer. They didn't have a lawyer. They didn't have a judge, but they knew how to pray. They had a prayer meeting at the midnight hour and God shook up the jail cell and set the preachers free. I 
believe you when I tell you Jesus Christ died for your sin and mine. They nailed him to a whipping. Oh, praise his name. He dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder. He died for your sin and mine. They laid him down in a borrowed tomb. Somebody said, we got him now. It's all over. But Sunday morning, God raised him up from a darkened grave. I'm out of here tonight. Shake one hand and tell your neighbor, I've been down and out. But God, I was lost in sin. But God, I couldn't find my way. But God, I was sick enough to die. No! 